send them over, broke them down like this. Absolutely, yeah. And they've got to rebuild them, yeah. And they've just got to rebuild them, which I'll just do what happened to do. Hey there, YouTube followers. Uh, we're here today with uh, John Raby from Trapanator Traps. Trapanator Traps or Trapanator? Just Trapanator. Just Trapanator. Just Trapanator. Trapanator Traps is fine. <laughs> and these guys are making these fantastic, this is the Dock 150, there's a Dock 200 in here, and this is the Dock 250. That's right, yes. And these are amazingly powerful traps. We're going to show you in a, in a short while how, how you set them. This is the tunnel that they need to go in, although you can make your own tunnels. You can indeed. As you were saying to me before, you can, you can actually get uh, advice from Trapanator as well, can't you? Exactly that. So we've got instructions on how to make your own tunnel, should you want to do that. Okay, and just looking at everything, I can see that everything is is quality. It's the way it should be. These are from New Zealand, is that that's correct, isn't it? These that's are, correct. These are developed in New Zealand and designed, them, designed, manufactured in New Zealand, and still are as well. Yes. Okay. So and the it, head office is in Auckland, in New Zealand. In Auckland. So you've come a fair way then today. <laughs> <laughs> Around the corner. Now, what? Why was the, this uh, the incentive to make these? over in New Zealand, what was going on. Uh, give us a little bit of history about this, because it's quite interesting, the, the history behind these traps, I think. So, so the DOC stands for Department of Conservation, uh, which is Department of yeah. Conservation in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And in New Zealand, it's really interesting that they have a huge drive kind of going on, which the public really seems to have bought into. And they're calling it uh, Predator Free 2050. Okay. And that is a thing about bringing back nature of New Zealand to its best. And the homeostasis yeah, of how it should be. And they want, the to, they want to eradicate all invasive species. And the problem on the big problems there, they're rats. So you've, got, so you've got the rats, you've got the Norway rats, you've got stoats and possums. Okay. Which we haven't got too many of. We haven't had possums yeah. here yet, but never say never. We and don't know what's going to come, do we? Exactly that. Wow, I mean, they are really, really impressive, uh, impressive traps. We've, we've just uh, had a little play around with them. And so this is the smallest one, the Dock 150. Yes. Now, all of these are available from Kiljourn, I believe, now, yeah. as of just now. As of just now, yeah. Okay, so the um, pest controllers will totally know who Kiljourn are, a great company, uh, based up north, I think, aren't they? Yeah, they're based uh, just outside Wakefield. Uh, we've had a few meetings with them, and you know their whole ethos as a business and what they see for the traps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's been fantastic. Yeah, and um, really, uh, really pleased to be partnering with them. Yeah, I think I think it'll be a good partnership. That um, they, they do some really great products at Kilger, and I can see this is a great product. Um, so the smallest one that is approved in the UK for. Yes, so all the traps here, they're on the spring trap approval order and also on the agreement of international humane trapping standards. Which gives us a bit more of a wider license to be able to use them around Europe, Canada okay. and the US. So this here is the Dock 150. So this has the approval for rats, weasels, stoats and grey squirrel. Wow. You then have the Dock 250, which will show short, show Shortly, so shortly as yeah. well. Uh, that covers for the same, but also for mink. And then we've got the Dock 250. This is a beast. This is an absolute <laughs> beast of a uh, beast of a trap. And that also has the approval in the UK for rabbits. For rabbits. And as well in Northern Ireland only, it has the approval against ferrets. Wow. So even even ferrets can be done with this thing. We'll show you how to set these in a, in a short while. Um, so the traps are used massively, so uh, pest controllers, gamekeepers, and we deal a lot with conservation projects as well. Uh, you say they're using these up on the Orkney Islands? Is that right? Yeah, so the Orkney Islands is a really interesting project where we've got going on, where we work closely with conservation and stuff there. Um, stoats, they're looking to eradicate from the islands of the Orkney Islands. Uh, and they've got a lot of our traps up there at the moment, which are playing huge parts in the, uh, in the protection of bird life and helping the bird life thrive out there. And that's why inside the tunnel, which is designed for them, you have this, this little thing yeah. here, which I think is 
very different. I've not ever seen it before in a in a track before. <laughs> that that was the horses, not us, by the way. <laughs> Hello, horses. I had to come across and get involved, didn't they? So this bit here, this is for egg eaters, basically, which kind yeah. of these was designed for in the first place. And so, that just so if you look at it, you know the trapping is a really important part to the protection of bird life and other wildlife and stuff. Yeah. You know we've got there's red listed birds you know the lapwing the curlew and these are beautiful birds which are yeah. you know they're red listed unfortunately and this comes down to predators one of the main predators for them being stoats yeah. and what the stoats are doing they're just going after the eggs and so what we've got here is you've got an egg holder here and in there you can put a decoy egg cover it all up Stokes come around, scavenging, you know, looking for it. And, and I'm always saying this to our customers. Um, people don't realise how much damage the grey squirrel does in the UK to songbirds. Um, they're, they're absolutely decimating the population of uh, songbirds throughout the UK. And people think they see this fluffy tail going around in the garden, going on to their bird feeder. And people don't realise that they're... they're they're omnivores. They'll, they'll eat meat as much as they will eat eggs, as much as they will eat the grain off the off off the bird table where they so, see them. You know, they look quite cute. But really, I'm going to look forward to when we can get to use this on some squirrel jobs. Autumn's on its way, so the squirrels will be going inside, and I'm going to be really intrigued to see if we can catch a squirrel on an egg. That's <laughs> going to be, uh, and I think we will. I don't see why we shouldn't do. We know that they eat. Squir eggs. Give it a go. So, uh, but you and can also use important. that for any lure that you wanted, really. Absolutely. You? And you know, as I do, the importance of uh, controlling the grey squirrels, you know, the, the predator against the red squirrels. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, we have to control them to uh, drive. And also against the loft hatches, the amount of damage that they cause. As well. Yeah, we've got some shocking Huge videos pests. of uh, up in people's lofts, the damage that they do. That one we went in last year, wasn't it? Uh, that squirrel video we did. That was with the WCS trap mainly. I saw it, traps. yeah. And um, well, this these make the WCS trap look a little bit weak. <laughs> and anyone who's out there who's used the WCS trap will realise if I'm saying this makes them look weak, this has got some power in it. And I'm really quite impressed with it. And when we go to this this tunnel, it's, even this is really well designed. You know, you can see the design thought that's gone into it. So one of the best things is is the fact that it's perspex, so we can see right down the centre of it. We can see if there's anything in there, we can see if there's any bait gone missing, we can see if there's been any activity in there. You can probably see me through there, I would think, Rick, can't you? Just about. It also makes things rather safe. So you've got these air holes here, because up in a loft or somewhere like that, it gets extremely hot. So you want that ventilation. It's also gonna let the smell of whatever the lure is in there if you're using the lure it's going to waft let that waft in and out we've got the same kind of whole situation going on at this end so this is the business end really this is where we want to get the rats or the squirrels or whatever the the quarry is we're after so they can see and smell the bait through this end but being the clever animals that these kind of animals are it won't take them very long to realise, oh, I can still see what I'm after through the perspex. And inside there, there's another baffle. So that means that children, adults can't actually get their hand through there. And when you see one of these going off, you'll realise why you wouldn't want to put your fingers in one of these traps. But what I really like about this box, is yeah. it's, you, you look at your standard kind of, um, box for rats where you've got your, your your plastic bait station you've got your metal bait station mm -hmm. and they're quite shallow aren't they in height yes yes and what i really like about this is actually it's the height that it offers at the same time so the behavior of the rat the behavior of squirrel the behavior of stoat is they want to come in and they like to feed off their hind or they like to sit up actually here and they like to they, they like to be able to stand up so they can just check around make sure there's nothing safe surroundings yeah. stuff like that you know it's a comfortable environment for them actually 
this offers them that at the same time. Yeah, it's really tall, isn't it? It's really tall. Um, and then but other... one of the things that we do, um, and we've, we've let it slip on a few of our videos, so we might as well let it slip again on this video, is quite often we don't just put baits on the actual trap. We'll actually put them in the top of the tunnel. And when it's this high, it's going to work even better because a lot of the time, trap shy animals, even though they'll have never seen this trap in the UK, um, sometimes they just get the sixth sense and they'll think, I don't know whether or not I want to go near that, but oh, look up there. And then what happens is they'll start taking the food off the tops and peanut butter or something that's stuck to the roof. And then they take their mind off the, what they're doing, uh, their eye off the ball. And the first thing they'll do is they'll come down from up there and they'll put their hands down on the treadle plate and it'll be down and they won't even know what's hit it. They certainly won't, won't know what's hit it with these. I mean, one of the things we discussed, discussed earlier, wasn't it? You know, especially for rats, you've got your standard kind of snap, snap traps that you just buy off the shelf and stuff like mm -hmm. this. That's really available. Um, you know, from my experience within the pest control industry, I'm sure yourself as yeah. well, um, they just don't deal with the adult rats. I've got boxes and boxes of standard style snap back rat traps. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I can't even bring myself to sell them to anyone around here because I know they're not going to catch rats because the rats in the West Midlands and a lot of the UK, they're so used to people trying to catch them and different types of things. Well, they've seen it all. They, they've literally seen it all. And through conditioned learning, they pass that information down to their family and friends and other other groups and once one rat knows a trick they'll all know the trick within very, a very short period of time but even if they do trigger for the adult rat and stuff like that the adult rat's just too powerful for the trap yeah they're, just, they are getting big they're around, just yeah. they're, they're strong as well and um, a rat comes running onto any of these traps here and yeah. um, as we saw earlier and we'll show on the video shortly there's uh there's going to be no false activations with these traps as well yeah it's, if it's gone it's gone hasn't it it's uh and just want to highlight as well so again the protection of um non-target species as well the trap itself as well will only trigger at 80 grams okay so if a field mouse goes running into the trap or anything like that ah. it's not it can run around on a crow plate it's much to do at once and stuff That's going to be really handy. That's going to be really handy because we, I don't know what's gone on the last couple of years. Who knows what's causing this? Field mice and rats seem to be living cheek by jowl. And what we find is we have to go through killing loads of field mice on traps before we can even get to the rats. So we have to, it's almost like it becomes a, a two part job. We have to get rid of the field mice first and then the rats. You, like in years gone by, it was very rare to find the two species living together because these are so much more powerful and they would bully the field mice out. But that is going to make a big difference because a lot of the time people aren't bothered about the field mice, but they are bothered about rats in their back gardens. And that's that, that yeah, again, again, that could be a real game changer in the pest control and the uh, gamekeeping industries. And it's ever so easy to change it as well. So you can actually change the sensitivity. So you can make it more sensitive, should you really want, or you can make it a little bit stuff if you want. So just here, so we've got the Waddington trigger here, but here, there's just a little tab. Okay, yeah, so I can see that there, yeah. And you've got the tab there as well, as a prime example. And the Waddington trigger, once it's set, will literally just sit in front of that tab there. Right, okay. And what you can do is if you want to make it a little less set, if you want to make it a bit more sensitive, you can just knock that tab down slightly. Right. Alternatively, if you want to make it a bit tougher, up, yeah. you can just you can lift it up. Ah. All you've got to do is just put a little screwdriver in there and just lift it up. Just a tiny little bit. Yeah, so there's going, there's going to be so many uses for these. Uh, the more I look at it, the more I think about it, the more I see the potentials for these traps. I uh, can't wait to get them out on the field. Um, it's going to be... They're stainless steel as well. So again, they're designed to last, yeah. you know, it's durable, it's powerful, it's incredibly reliable, you know, the slogan is, it's the trap that works. And this is what your customers want, you know, they want to be looking at something where they go, that's different, that I haven't tried, I haven't bought that off Amazon, you know, it's, and, and, and the, the, these, they just look great. They, <laughs> I look at it and you know, they have a good bit of kit, man. again, work as a pest controller, managing the pest control and stuff like this. These are the traps which I think that everybody should have within their armory, you know. Mm. 
it's it's trap not only does it deal with rats you've got your gray squirrels from the pest control and stuff like that again they can deal with a rat they can deal with the weasels they can deal with stouts you can deal with the mink as well should they want to deal with that but they've got the durability um you know the, this the versatility of the trap as well or where you can it can be used internally it can be used externally you know trap and, and these big boys here these are licensed for rabbits in the UK? Rabbits in the UK as well. Wow. And ferrets, was it? Ferrets in Northern Ireland. Ferrets only. in Northern Ireland. Wow. So, I mean, that is sort of some trap, that is, isn't it? Let's, uh, let's show people how, how, how to set them, basically. They do need to be screwed down, don't they? They've got to be they screwed do. down, again. Spring so, trap approval order, you know, we follow the manufacturing instructions and stuff like this. It has to be screwed down, it has to be in a box as well, depending on where it's, where it's a run through a tunnel or a single entry or closed end tunnel. Okay, and this is what this this, this is a closed is. end. So, again, absolutely ideal uh, rats, your squirrels. Um, we know a lot of people, as we said earlier, like to make their own tunnels. Yeah, again. Uh, we can provide those instructions or internally as well for the pest controllers. Uh, Kill Germ as well provide those instructions should people want to make their own tunnels. Okay, let's put one on the floor. This table's a bit uh, shaky for this. Okay, John, do you want to show us how to set these traps? Yep. So they do look a bit uh, scared to put the fingers near it at the moment because <laughs> I've seen one go off. So it's, inc I... it's incredibly easy to set. I'll set it now, then if you have a go and just see it for yourself. Okay. Uh, so as we say, it's fixed down into this box here, two screws here, just fixed down. Easy thing to do is put your foot on the plate here, and then we've got a safety bar here. And all we're doing is we're just pulling it back, pulling it back, and up comes the Waddington trigger. We go over the Waddington trigger, and it's really important is this bar, and you just slowly release it, and it just sits in front of that tab there. I've still got control of this. I've let go. And that's it set. And that's the trap set. So then you just close the lid down, and obviously once you've baited it and things like that. That's it, exactly that. There is a safety clip that we can put on as well. It just goes inside just goes there. Across, uh... exactly. Shall I set this one off, Rick? Yeah. I reckon so. So basically, your quarry comes in. Let's see what it does to this stick. That's quite, quite terrifying, isn't it? When that goes off, that really is a bang. So now we've seen a professional setting it. Let's see if an idiot like me can set it without losing any fingers. Let's have a go. So here we are. So, so for me. The initial thing really is just getting used to what the power of the spring is. Once you've got used to how powerful the spring is, it's incredibly easy to set. Yes. Yeah. So, so you just see it from the power. So foot onto the onto the plate. Yep. So that's all held down nicely. Let's move this out. Okay, so onto the handle. And then literally it's a case of Lifting that back, wow, there really is some power in that. So then we lift it all the way back, past the Waddington trigger. Slowly release it. Then you hold that little catch there. Slowly release. And there you go. And then, I'm always scared to let go of it, but it's fine. Absolutely, Absolutely fine. fine. And then take your foot off, and then we wait for our usual quarry. I feel sorry for the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put him on. You ain't going nowhere with him, are you? Yeah? I'll try and put it says right across it. This is the big boy. This one is even licensed for use on rabbits. And you'll see why in a minute when we set this off. So 
Let's get this pulled back. Wow, there's some power in this. Some power over the top. Keep coming. Oop. And then slowly let that forwards. Take my fingers off. Wow, this is a terrifying bit of kit. Let's uh, so it just to this oak branch. Wow. <laughs> that is a powerful bit of kit, isn't it? So now you've seen how easy these are to, to set. Uh, John from Trapanator showed me how to do it. I'm gonna show Ricky how to do it. Ricky's never set one of these. Ricky, come and have a go. I'll talk you through it and we'll show you just how simple these, these traps are to use. So put your foot right on the, on the board. Yep. Okay. I'm guessing you pull that up. So grab that little handle there. Keep one finger on the loop. That's and then this so is the strong. bit where you need to go a little bit slow. And then just let that drop slowly, 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 slowly. And that's it. And then really slowly drop that on. Keep your finger in the loop, one finger in the loop. So that's basically set now. That's set. Drop that off. Take your foot away. And then Mr. Rat comes along and <laughs> Mr. Rat is no more. Absolutely fantastic bits of kit. Like we say, these are available from Kill Germ. Thank you very much, John, for coming out and showing us these traps and the story behind them. We're gonna be doing some more videos with these. Who knows, we might even try these beasts. That's monster, isn't it? These beasts on, uh, on rabbits. But we'll definitely be using these on squirrels and rats in our local vicinity. It's a crying shame that we got rid of all the rats here. You might, <laughs> you might recognize this from off our uh, stint on channel five you can see a few videos of us here on that right here if you're watching on mobile there's going to be some links in the description while you're here why not watch this video or this one may be all about squirrels but um we're going to be doing some great videos with these we're going to have some great successes with these ricky i yeah. think what a powerful bit of kit nice to see something new on the market